Hi, I'm Michelle Tompkins. I am joined by Dr. Magnet with Vein Specialist. We're going to discuss a Wellness Connection program being held in the Oak Room on May 24th. First, let me welcome Dr. Magnet for being here with me today. Well, thank you, Michelle. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So, your program is called Venus Insufficiency. That's going to be at 1 o'clock on May 24th in the Oak Room. However, expand a little bit on that topic. Well, Michelle, in the past, you know, you've been gracious to have uh, me uh, come talk to the to the uh, um, residents at Shell Point, mm -hmm. and I, in the past, I've, I've given almost like a lecture. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more of a discussion of what I think are the probably the three most common and important things related to venous insufficiency or presentations of that. And what would those be? The three most. So common? the first, the first thing is, we'll be focusing on is orthovenous disease. Mm -hmm. Now it's not a word. It's a neologism, but it's a combination of, of orthopedic and venous disease, sort of where those two diseases collide, and they okay. collide in our patients. Many patients who have orthopedic disease, knees, hips, mm -hmm. ankles that are bad, also have venous disease. And, and venous insufficiency, leaky veins, can really impact those patients' knee re replacements, those hip replacements, the rehab. And even before having the procedures, those orthopedic procedures can, can, can change the course if you identify and treat. The second uh, type of disease, combination disease, we'll be talking about is dermatovenous disease. Venous insufficiency uh, presents oftentimes with dermatologic manifestations, so like discolored skin. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes dermatologists will look at the skin and say, well, it's discolored, it's inflamed, it's stasis, dermatitis, take the steroid cream, it's gonna help with the inflammation, but it doesn't fix the underlying problem. So we need to sort of rethink of that, that process. I mean, it's not a, a dermatologic disorder. It's a presentation, dermatologically, of a vein disorder. And then the final thing, which is, uh, I think is really under the radar, is the trifecta, the nighttime trifecta of three different types of symptoms. Those are uh, nighttime leg cramps in charley horses, mm -hmm. restless leg syndrome, and uh, nighttime urination, frequent trips to the bathroom to urinate. That may not be the prostate, that may, that may not be part of getting old. Mm -hmm. Those three symptoms are often seen in our patients with severe venous insufficiency. And if we, if we can identify it mm -hmm. with ultrasound, we can treat it and hopefully uh, and oftentimes resolve that tri trifecta. Now, is one person more at risk than the other? What are the risk factors well, for this? The, the primary common thread with venous insufficiency is heredity. Mm. So, uh, if you can't find somebody in your family who had it, and you have it, doesn't, it just really doesn't really matter because you have it. Mm -hmm. Other things that make it worse, I call them the exacerbating factors, are obesity, um, sedentary jobs, or jobs you're standing a lot and not moving, advanced age. As we get older, the prevalence of this disease increases. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a rule of thumb, it's about 1% per year of age. So a 20-year-old has about a 15 to 20% chance of having it. Can they have it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. My son is uh, 19. He has it in his left leg. He can't see it, but he feels heavy and achy, and an ultrasound showed us severe disease. His mother has it, my wife. Um, her father had it. There's some people in my family that have it. So it's, it's a very uh, common disease entity, but it's something that we used to just brush aside because the treatment before the year 2000 was stripping. That's why we ignored it. I mean, because the treatment is almost worse than the disease. So with the new technology that's been out since 2000 of mm -hmm. sealing the veins from within under ultrasound guidance, uh, the, the whole landscape, I think, for patients with venous disease has changed significantly. And rather than being reactive to complications such as bleeding or thrombosis or non-healing wounds, now we can be a bit more proactive in evaluating patients for venous disease. Sure. So this is a lot of great information. I'm, I'm learning a lot about this just sitting here right now. But this is going to be a great program that our residents certainly will get a lot out of and benefit from. So thank you well, for being here. Thank you again for having me. So if you are interested in learning more and hearing more about venous insufficiency, the symptoms, how you're diagnosed, and the procedures to make you feel better, or if you're just interested in, in hearing about it, please feel free to sign up at your service desk for the presentation on the 24th of May, 1 o'clock in the Oak Room. Hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you.